How can children as young as second grade discover a connection to nature? Our December Harmony Harrow has helped her students make these discoveries by focusing on what's around them. Through raising monarchs, building a pollinator garden in the school forest, these Wisconsin students realize that nature affects their daily lives. Today, we'll speak to Jenna McCann about her efforts to help tomorrow's leaders become environmentally conscious. Jenna, we are so excited to name you December's Harmony Hero. Thank you, I am very honored. It's great to meet with you. <laughs> Likewise, can you share with us what you've been up to? It's just, it's amazing. I've been working with kids and community with raising the awareness of monarchs for about 25 years. And it's just so rewarding to see the numbers of monarchs increasing and just the passion that kids and adults can have for looking to save the species. Can you share what it was like to build a pollinator garden? Uh, certainly. What we looked at were species that are native to Wisconsin for grasses and for flowers. It's important for the kids to know the life cycle of not just monarchs, but all of the insects in Wisconsin. So we looked at what are their needs? What are their host plants when they're caterpillars? And then what are the best nectar plants that provide food for the adults? We were able to collect those seeds and use them in our school garden area, but also a school forest and prairie that we're working to preserve. So I know you help your children connect to nature. Can you share what they discover when doing this? Getting their hands dirty, you know, getting their shoes wet, being outside and having those experiences, whether it's a rainy day or a sunny day, is really critical for them to have a connection with a piece of dirt right here in their backyard. Because if they know their place, they know the habitat, they know the animals that should be there, they can start to know how important that is. Then they can take it out into the world and hopefully they'll keep it with them their whole life. Jenna, could you share with us the conservation efforts around the monarch? At school, it's important that the kids kind of learn the basics. They need the vocabulary. They need to know about the life cycle. But it's been a privilege to also work with my local libraries. And during the summertime, I provide a display terrarium that just has the life cycle ongoing. I bring fresh milkweed in every day to the plexiglass display and kids and adults can see the eggs and the caterpillars. They wait for the chrysalis to emerge into a butterfly. And then with the help of the librarians, they release the butterflies the day that they emerge. Jenna, I've heard that you have raised an incredible amount of monarchs and released them. Well, each year, if I see a monarch caterpillar in my flower bed, I bring them in and rear them. And then the morning that they emerge, I release them as soon as their wings are dry. But the most I've ever reared and released in one summer is 131. And that summer was such an encouragement um, because the monarchs have had some significant population decrease, some estimates at 90%. Jenna, could you share with us the treehouse behind you? So we had a windstorm and in our yard, we had some branches and trees come down. And when I took a look at them, had a fun idea for a tree house in the classroom because sometimes you need to bring the nature in. And we use it primarily for like a reading space where children can go up in the tree house uh, with their books and just have a time of reading to themselves. And it just gives a really nice secure space but still sort of a nature-based area right in our classroom. Oh, that's fantastic, bringing the outdoors indoors. You're turning your students into future leaders. T tell me from your heart what, you know, what, it, what it means to you to win a trip to the Monarch Winter Habitat. Uh, that would be a life-changing experience. 
Um, so often when I have uh, traveled for uh, like scuba diving trips, I take lots of video underwater and I use the videos when I'm teaching about ocean habitats with my students. So if I were to win the trip, that would be the first thing I would do, would be to take video along the way to make it as much of a field trip for my students and anyone who watched the video as possible. We are so impressed and amazed at your work, Jenna, and we wish you all the best of luck in the future and the best of luck on winning the trip. And thank you to you for all that you and your company does to really also take care of the environment and be proactive with that. To see what we've been up to this year with the Harmony Heroes, visit the intro video where you'll hear from Dr. Court Whelan, National Habitat Adventure Guide and Entomologist, who will be guiding our winner and three of their guests to the Central Mexican Mountains Winter Habitat Home of the Monarchs.